What is going on, you guys? Pet Platypus here, and it is time for a Young Justice double review, starting with episode 18, Secrets. This was a pretty nice little episode. Uh, you know, nothing too much in the way of plot progression or any major character development or big battles, but it was just a nice little Halloween episode. I'll be on front and say that I kind of liked the Connor and Wally and Megan fucking McGann storyline. I liked them at the high school more so than the... Uh, actual main storyline because I don't know it was just funnier I like seeing some of the references like that one fucking cheerleader was dressed as like a bee so yeah they are totally referencing that Teen Titans character and then uh, I think I saw a dude dressed as like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo in the background and then uh, when they pull that prank on the dude who was originally pulling the Martian prank uh, fucking Megan look makes herself look like Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes that was a really awesome just that whole prank was really fun and just their whole section was really nice. And just kind of a cool little uh, slice of life, breath of fresh air, you know, just fucking no crazy drama going on. Uh, so that was nice. The main plot, I didn't dislike it, but Harm, the character, was kind of annoying, to be honest. And the sword was cool. I liked the uh, sheath that the sword was in, and it had, like, cool lightning powers or whatever. And then the story with his little sister. And I liked when Artemis blew up the kitchen. That was pretty badass. So there was some cool action, and uh, seeing Artemis and Zatanna team up is pretty cool because we haven't really seen them interact too much outside of that one mission they went on. So, yeah, there was cool action, and it was cool seeing them, you know, just go out and fight crime, but uh, the actual villain himself was kind of, he wasn't super weak, but he was kind of just meh, and he was kind of annoying the way he constantly said harm over and over, and I get that. Zatanna and Artemis, mostly Artemis, were, they were getting annoyed by him repeatedly saying that, so maybe that was the point. I just found him to be a bit annoying. And then the history with his sister was cool, very adult. He basically just flat out says, like, yeah, I had to cut all ties with her. He basically admits, yeah, I killed my sister. That's pretty dark, but I'm not really surprised at this point that Young Justice can get away with that. So, yeah, and then the ghost of the girl was pretty cool. Uh, she was dressed kind of interesting. I don't know if that's what she died in or whatever, because she was wearing almost like a, what you'd expect a superhero to wear, so that was kind of weird, but, yeah, I don't know, it was just, it was an okay little storyline. I was hoping for more from Artemis. I was really hoping when Zatanna confronted her at the end to be just like, you know, like, don't bury the secrets, tell me something. I was really expecting her to say something to make this episode just a little bit more uh, meaningful, but as it stands, it's a nice little fluff Halloween episode that's just... Got some cool action, some cool character interactions, funny little subplot with Connor and all them, so... Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this one. Animation, of course, is good. Voice acting is, of course, great. Music was good. Oh, also, they showed a scene with uh, Batman and them talking about... Uh... Anyways, well, just to finish what I was saying, all the technical aspects are good, as always. Don't have to beat a dead horse there, but... The Batman scene, where they got, I believe it was Robin, Aqualad, Batman and I forget who else was there, uh, and Red Arrow was there too, and they were talking about who this mole might be, and, uh, you know, Aqualad was like, I don't think it's anybody, I think it was just a ploy to make us fucking think that we have a mole to divide our team, but I don't know, I feel like if they're still holding on to this storyline, that's not the case, and then Batman, like, I took a total shot in the dark, and I was like, you know, maybe Superboy, like, I was totally pulling it out of my ass, I was like, maybe Superboy is still somehow working for fucking Cadmus, and then I'm just like, ah, like, it just feels good when Batman fucking, like, validates what you say. Like, I totally pulled that shit out of my ass, but now I have Batman on my side, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, but joking aside, uh, Batman does say Superboy might not even know he's the spy. He pretty much, whatever, whatever my theory was, he pretty much just said the exact same thing. And then, uh... Red Arrow, Suspicious of Artemis, I really feel like those two characters have to confront each other at some point. That would be very interesting. Obviously, Robin's in the clear. Aqualad, though. I never really suspected Aqualad, but he might be. Like, I don't think he would be, but I really never thought about it because he's the one who's been looking for the spy. He's the one who's been saying, I don't want to tell anybody that there's a spy. And it's he's almost like the perfect one because he has like so many alibis but at the same time, it's like, maybe it's fucking Aqualad, but I don't know. I really don't, but I'm very interested uh, to see what's going to happen. Because I just, I never thought of him until this episode, but it could totally be him. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. That was just one little scene that kind of moved the plot forward, but not really. 
Uh, they almost revealed Artemis' identity, but then didn't. I don't know if that's going to be like a big reveal or anything. It doesn't seem like it. We've seen her mom. We know who her sister is. So, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, it was a uh, it was a fun episode. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I'll probably get like a 7.5. It was a good episode of Young Justice. Nothing amazing, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit. And now we'll move on to episode 19. So, episode 19, Misplaced. Oh boy, this fucking episode. This was, oh my god, everything. Like, the animation, the plot, the story, the character interaction, the ending. Oh my, this episode. Okay, so the plot of this one is all the kids and all of the adults simultaneously disappear from two separate dimensions. At first, it looks like it's just the adults. And you have only the Young Justice team and Billy Batson, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam. They're the only ones left. Uh, all the adults are gone. Everything goes crazy. You know, cars are crashing because the adults are vanishing and everything. And, you know, the Young Justice team have to do what they can to help. On the flip side, in a separate dimension all of the children disappear and it's only the adults that are left but Shazam can switch between them by transforming into Shazam or Captain Marvel so that's really really fucking cool and the whole concept of the episode is fucking awesome especially the way they portray all of this stuff I mean just the little moments like when Superboy pulls that kid out of the car and he's got a little Superman sweater on and he sees the symbol on Superboy's chest and he touches it very cute moment like that was, was was really nice and like Artemis just singing bullshit songs to the kids to keep them happy doing those things that you don't need to be a superhero with a badass bow and arrow to do you know be a, just a generally nice person and seeing it from the adults perspective and Shazam switching between them the wizards the final battle at the end was really really cool just you know Shazam continuing to switch between them I love the scene where Shazam uh, meets up with the Justice League, not the Justice League, the Young Justice team, and they find out he's a kid, which is something I've really wanted to see for a long time. And then what we end up seeing is them devising a strategy by talking to each other through Captain Marvel. Like, they're able to, you know, he turns into a kid, you know, he relays what Batman said to the Young Justice team, he turns into an adult, and he relays what they said back to Batman and Zatara. And it's just... Oh my god, it's so cool the way this whole episode episode was laid out and executed. You even get Illuminati shit. You get them with the fucking, uh, that t piece of tentacle, like the surviving thing from that episode way back early, uh, where Aqualad went back to his home. So that was really, really great little story progression for the overall story. And then the ending with Dr. Fate, where... He you know, I was saying before, I was like, if they pull the helmet thing again where this person gets to just go free, it's going to dimin it's gonna diminish the sacrifice of putting on the helmet. And Zatanna puts it on, and he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to let her go. And Zatara's like, nah, it's going to be me. You're going to use me. I'm stronger with magic. I'm physically stronger than her. I'll make the sacrifice. And he does it. And it's just like, oh, so they didn't fuck up the helmet storyline. Great sacrifice for the character. Zatanna apparently joined the team, you know, she's living there now, so they have a new team member, and now she has, you know, stuff she can do as far as character development, and holy crap, this episode from, like I said, the concept, the plot, the way it's executed, with Shazam switching between the two dimensions, even the villain who, uh, you know, at the beginning of this video I was already planning, I was like, you know, we went from one annoying villain with harm to an even more annoying villain, but he wasn't annoying in this episode. And it's just, oh, I haven't done this in a while. Let me take off the shades for this one. This episode of Young Justice gets an 11 out of 10. That's right, an 11 out of 10. This episode of Young Justice was absolutely awesome. Literally, in my opinion, a perfect episode of the series. From the concept being super unique and super original, to the execution, to the animation, to the voice acting, to even the little moments. Like Superboy rescuing that kid, 
This episode just had it all. It was just fantastic. It had the sacrifice at the end, the helmet storyline, you know, Dr. Fate is now back. You know, it seems like they have a new team member on the team, which of course, I don't know if she'll be getting in on the action anytime soon. She just lost her father, so, you know, but still, just, and the potential for character development and everything, just, I was floored by this episode. I absolutely loved it. I'm giving this one an 11 out of 10. Probably, I think, the first 11 out of 10 for Young Justice. And the first 11 out of 10 I've officially given in a while. I mean, there have been times where I'm reading a chapter or reading an, uh, watching an episode and I'm like, you know, like, you know, the Jiro chapter. I think I said, like, this might be like, oh, you know, if... Why do I spoil Toriko? Well, fuck it. It's another video on my channel. Fuck it. A character died, or possibly died, and I was like, yeah, you know, if it's official and it's, you know, he's dead, then maybe an 11 out of 10, it's a big deal for the overall series. But no, this is, like, definitive. I'm giving an 11 out of 10. No caveats, no conditions. This was just a great fucking episode. An amazing episode, excuse me. In my opinion, a perfect episode. But what did you guys think of these episodes of Young Justice? You guys can tell me in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram or add me on PSN. I'm Pep Platypus on both. You can give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. Both of those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thanks for watching.